Okay. So maybe what I'm trying to get at is your perspective on overall lawlessness in America. Because if maybe I'm just watching too many TikToks about store, you know, Chicago stores, Portland, Oregon stores, just getting ransacked and, hey, theft under a thousand bucks, we don't give a shit about. Go ahead and steal. It seems like it's getting out of control. So what here's here's my prescription on crime. So yeah. I, again, I don't, for me, it's not a systemic thing. It's my client, this situation, best outcome. That's what I care about. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to ask me as a citizen what I, or, or as like a policy person, what I think should happen, we need more, what we used to call broken windows enforcement, which is if you do something shitty, a cop's going to be on your ass right then when it happens. You're going to have immediate accountability. That comes right? from New York, right? Where they took uh, yeah. really small crimes like, Broken windows and graffiti, Jumping seriously. Over, yeah, exactly. So you were, you knew you were going to have a cop on your ass at that time. But what we have to do, so from one end, we have to push harder. But from the other end, this mass incarceration issue comes from the length of sentences. So we need to actually reduce sentence for some crimes, but increase the ability to keep people accountable on the front end. Do we need more police officers? Yeah, I think we need better better police officers, better trained, and more of them. Because another pipe dream I would have if I got to be mayor would be recruiting some sort of high level, like, hey, you were ex-Special Forces, ex-Marine. No, we don't need that No? Shit, too, that's no, too intense? No, we don't need, we don't need to but, militarize our city. No, 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 not militarize. What we need, what we but need, have trained professionals that have experience in tough moments, and we hold, hold them to a very high standard. Hey, if you get caught beating a suspect, no, it's bad news. We don't, need, we don't need any more. We need, like, officer-friendly, somebody who can build rapport and trust with the community. Hey, you're having a tough time. Are you, like, is this, I, I've dealt with this guy. He, we know he has schizophrenia. Or um, we know this kid comes from a real fucked-up background, but he's actually pretty nice if you talk to him about the bucks. Or, you know, mm. commun- true community policing where these cops aren't just riding around in cars all the time responding to instance as they happen. You can actually have a cop out. That's why they have these cops on bikes. Now they can kind of go around, they can build rapport. They can build what's called a, that kind of institutional knowledge of their blocks and know that they can stop. Hey, they know Edward, they, they know happen. Jerome. And so yeah. then they can kind of, Oh, Hey Jerome, I saw that this garage is broken into. Can you, you know anything yeah, about right. that? Yeah, and then yeah. I see the value in that. I also talked to a couple of those bike cops uh, a while ago at a coffee shop and they said, yeah, when we do like the midnight shift, like we get stones thrown at us, beer beer bottles. It would be a scary position, I think, to be an officer. So you have to be, you have to find some kind of brave, really good-hearted people that are going to start that trend. Sure. But you know what happened about, I don't know, 10 years ago when Scott Walker, at the behest of the cop union, uh, got rid of residency. So it used to be if you wanted to be a Milwaukee firefighter or cop, you had to live in the city limits. And there, there were neighborhoods like Southwest side, um, which were basically cop land. I mean, every other house was a cop or a firefighter and the union said, man, we got to get rid of this. Our, our, our members want to live in East Troy or, you know, where, where, where Keegan's from, you know, Waterford, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so what's <laughs> happened, I mean, this is the, this is the anti-community policing. So you have these primarily white cops. They live in the suburbs. They live in Delafield. They come in, they do their eight hour shifts and then they leave and they have no, they, one, they don't have any cultural knowledge of what's going on in the city, but they don't have kind of that deep tie to the city that they used to. And politically, it was actually a bad thing because now they say, oh, we want to we want to elect a Tommy G, somebody who's really behind the cops, and the politicians are going, well, fuck you, you don't want to fucking live here. Mm-hmm. You know, the people who live here are the activists who are up my butt about too much policing. And so they've cut their own wrists. Do you think they're struggling to hire officers from 5 through 206, 218, 209? They're really zip codes of the 210, 216. I would imagine they have trouble recruiting in those zip codes. Uh, I don't have any firsthand knowledge. I, I know that's the big major struggle is to get uh, police that are representative of the community. Yeah. I would think that would be a major goal for anybody. Hmm. Mr. Adams, we've talked about an awful lot. Is there anything that is left on a, your mind? Let's talk about drugs. Let's talk about drugs. So a big part you of You got my, some in your pocket right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh... A big part of my practice is what's called Len Bias homicide. Do you know about Len Bias? Tell me more. Len Bias was a famous basketball player okay. in the 80s. He played for the Maryland Terrapins. He was the next Jordan. And people say he was better than Jordan. And, you know, he was like two years behind him, three years behind him. Uh, in 1986, he was, so maybe more than three years, he was like three or four years behind Jordan. He was the first 
draft picked in the NBA draft by the Celtics. So bias had the Jersey he had the hat, you know, David Stern there. And he goes off to, uh, to camp the next month. And some of his buddies from Maryland come up, they use cocaine, his heart explodes and he dies. Oh, okay. I've heard about this guy. Okay. So 